We are joined today by Mateus Falcão from the Brazilian Center of Health Studies and the People's Health Movement of Brazil. He's going to discuss with us the current situation in Brazil, what policies has the government taken that has brought it to this current moment in the pandemic where it continues to be the hotspot after months of you know, tragic news of uh, continual deaths and in, um, a growing infection right there. So thank you so much for joining us, Mateus. Thank you, Zoe. It's nice to be here. Great. And so first question is that, you know, uh, in the past couple of days, Brazil has overcome the very worrisome milestone of over 100,000 deaths from COVID and over 3 million confirmed cases. So what is the current situation looking like? Has Brazil reached the peak yet? What are infection rates looking like? If you can give us a general kind of uh, scope of what's happening across the country. Yeah. So indeed, it's a very hard situation. Uh, Brazil is a great, it's a big country with more than 200 million people. So it would look like, like a country that would have a lot of cases, but actually it has, um, it's one of the countries that has more cases per person as well. And it's basically due uh, bad uh, pandemic handling by the central government. Uh, there's no evidence for now that we have reached the peak or that we are close uh, to flatten the curve. Um, it's very important to, to keep in mind that Brazil is a very big country and it has uh, a lot of difference between regions, uh, which include healthcare infrastructure, uh, social inequalities, a uh, bunch of inequities. So now uh, we will see some uh, regions in Brazil, especially the big cities where the pandemic has started here, like Sao Paulo, for instance, the city where the pandemic indeed started that uh, are close to reach like perhaps the peak or even uh, to flatten the curve. But what we see now is that the, pan the pandemic in Brazil is moving uh, towards the countryside part. So we see an increasing of cases in medium cities and small cities, uh, which is dangerous as well because sometimes the city doesn't have uh, a, a good inf healthcare infrastructure like the, the capital of the big cities. And this would be the movement now, uh, it's, import it's important to notice as well that uh, each uh, state or municipality in Brazil has such an autonomy, we'll talk about this later, I guess, but an autonomy to create its own policies in terms of pandemic handling. Uh, so we see this difference as well uh, across the territory. Yeah, and so you mentioned that a lot of these uh, kind of alarming numbers and the higher cases per resident also has to do with uh, the failed policies of the central government and a lot of cases you know not only failed policies but actually resistance to taking any policies so can you discuss some of the public health uh, mishap that has been undertaken by the central government and then maybe also on a state level what has been done what hasn't been done yeah sure so uh first of all it's important to understand how the brazilian health system works we do have a big uh, healthcare and public uh, health system, public, yeah, I mean, for public health measures and for healthcare, that is called the Unified Health System, Sistema Unico de Saúde in Portuguese. Uh, it's similar in some ways of the NHS in the uh, United Kingdom. So it's a public healthcare system and it's also, it should also take the public health measures. Uh, it's organized in three levels. So municipalities, that is the local level, the cities, state, level and federal level, right? So each of them should work coordinately, coordinately um, even in financial measures, but also in health actions, including public health actions. Uh, it's important to understand. So uh, the federal government within this system should take a role of coordination, of information, of um, proposing the framework for taking, for adoption, adopting the measures at state and local level. This would be the expected road besides uh, financing uh, healthcare and public health measures. This would be the basically two uh, roles expected by the federal government. What we have seen uh, since the beginning uh, of the pandemic in Brazil is um, it's a position, uh, a point taken uh, by the federal government, especially by our president of complete denial of the pandemic. So we are dealing with a very hard and dangerous situation and the central government is basically denying how dangerous it is. Um, so we had one minister that uh, was developing the first, one health ministry at federal level 
um, that was developing the first public policy, public health measures, uh, and it was fired by the president. Then we had a second minister that uh, was in charge for, I guess, one month, and it was fired again. Um, and now we have, uh, how can I say, this uh, is not exactly an official minister, it's like a minister that is waiting for the nomination of the next one, but it has taken more than 30 days, more than one month, basically two months. So we're, we are just expecting the nomination of the, the next health minister that never happens. So here we can see by this position of denial, a very bad pandemic handling at central government. Uh, the central government has also uh, replied, has, offer, has also answered the pandemic by uh, offering to people one solution. The solution would be some medicines with unproven effect to handling pandemic. I'm talking especially about chloroquine and hydroxychloroquine. That was also a medicine um, supported by the U.S. United States central government, right? Uh, so the central government were uh, basically supporting that this medicine would, um, would be the cure for COVID-19, which we know it's not. Uh, so basically, this was the only main action, the only main plan taken by the central government, uh, which has revealed itself inefficient for, uh, for having any better results in pandemic handling. Uh, there are some phrases, very iconic phrases from our president that express this uh, point of denial of the pandemic. Like when we reach a certain levels of death, he, he just stated, so why? Uh, I don't work in cemeteries. Uh, very weird sentence, very weird statements that he just that just proves this position of denial of this hard situation. So this would be a general framework. On the other hand, we have some uh, public health measures that were adopted by state level governments. Um, so the main discussion in Brazil is, uh, should we take social isolation measures like quarantine or not? Central government basically, no, we shouldn't have we shouldn't uh, adopt these measures because this will harm economy. But what scientists and specialists and some politicians, the opposition says is, yeah, we should take these measures and we should provide uh, economic uh, relief, economic help for people in general in order to avoid this economic harm. So some uh, state level governments uh, and some uh, municipalities as well, uh, they have adopted uh, social isolation uh, measures in order to, to tackle the pandemic developing in Brazil. Uh, our Supreme Court has, uh, has decided, and this was very important, that this public health measures should be taken by uh, state level, which does not mean that the central government shouldn't also take this public health measures. They also have a very important duty and a very important role in financing health care, public health care, and in taking the coordination within this framework of public health measures. Uh, one last point. The central government um, should provide more financial resources for health care. We have recent studies uh, uh, showing that not even half of the resources reserved for uh, transferring in order to tackle COVID-19 pandemic uh, were, were, uh, were indeed transferred to state level and to municipalities. So this is also a very important problem that could also result in the future, we hope, in even uh, juridical uh, court responsabilization of the central, central government. Yeah, I think that's a really um, challenging and complicated situation, especially given as uh, you comrades have written about before, is that the neoliberal policies of this government and you know, the interim government of Michel Temer have really worked to dismantle um, this very important uh, unified health system in Brazil, which is the, you know, the safety net for the majority of Brazil's population as many people do not have access to private health insurance. So can you talk a bit about how you know, years of neoliberalism has set up Brazil not only to do, you know, poorly with, you know, the introduction of a fascist government, which outrightly doesn't take, you know, the necessary policies, but also it's already in a bad situation to be able to respond. Yeah, yeah, sure. So we have this unified health system uh, that was a system adopted in our constitution in uh, 1880. 
1988, sorry, after a big uh, social movement struggling for right to health. So Brazil has uh, acknowledged, recognized uh, right to health in uh, our constitution in 1988. And since then, we are trying to develop this, uh, this great and beautiful public health care and public health system in order to realize, to fulfill this idea of right to health. But on the other hand, we also have this uh, public insurance system that works similarly to what we would find uh, in the United States of America, for instance. And what we see by comparing these two systems is that the public system is much more cheap and much more uh, effective. Uh, so 75% uh, of the Brazilian population can only rely on healthcare on the public system and not on the private because they don't have private health insurance, right? Uh, besides that, the private health insurance companies do not provide uh, medicines, the, all the medicines, the essential medicines, uh, and some very complex procedures, just like transplants, uh, are mostly uh, did, are mostly done here in Brazil by the public system. I'm talking about 90, 80% of the transplants in Brazil uh, being doing within the public healthcare system and not in private healthcare system. So we see that, uh, and besides that, the public system, unified health system, SUS, also works on production of medicines. We have public production of medicines in Brazil and even in the developing of the COVID-19 um, vaccine. Uh, so, and also in uh, formation of health professions. So it's a very wide uh, public health system. Uh, and about 75% of our population relies only on this public health care. But on the other hand, the private uh, health care system, uh, not system, I mean, private health care in general in Brazil costs about half of our public spending in health. And the other half goes to our public system. So what we see, what we can uh, conclude by looking into these numbers is that the public system is more cheap and more efficient, more effective, uh, while the public uh, health care and the uh, unregulated uh, private health care are much more expensive. Uh, so this would be a good comparison. And what we, ha what we had recently is that the central government, and this is not from this current government, it has happened in the last decades, are not complying as we think uh, it should comply with financing duties uh, with the public system. Uh, it has worsened in Michel Temer government with the, with the adoption of a uh, constitutional amendment, the constitutional amendment number uh, 95 that established a cap for public spending. And this has worsened public spending on public system, public health system. So this would be something that we are struggling now for, for a review. Uh, and we, we do think that uh, within this pandemic context, the public system uh, has been strengthened within the public discourse, the public speech, as we have noticed that only a public system can uh, handle the pandemic well. Yeah, no, I think that's a really important reflection that we're seeing across the world that uh, the privatized healthcare system is incapable of responding, you know, to the masses, and that its incapacity also has propagated the further spread of the virus. Of course, we see the case of the United States as a very extreme example of this. Um, but I think that's, you know, all we have time for at this moment. Um, it's a very important case to continue watching and um, concerning that it continued that the virus continues to spread and we're hoping that um, you know the people's uh, main, maintaining disciplined and you know being able to take the measures that they can will hopefully in some way counteract <laughs> um, you know the mismanagement on a national level but yeah thank you so much for joining us and yeah I thank you for the opportunity and I also hope that we can overcome this very hard situation and strengthen this sense of solidarity uh, that shapes our public health system and the struggling for right to health. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. That's all we have time for. Thank you for watching People's Dispatch. <laughs> Bye.